Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. Now let's get in some front page news. Now, like we were saying earlier, yesterday was the solar eclipse, and people were so excited about this eclipse. And if it didn't get completely dark by you, well, because you just weren't in that area. Mm. One of the first places to witness total darkness today was Mazatlan, Mexico. This is time lapse showing day turning to night. Texas was the first place in the U.S. to witness the moon perfectly covering the sun. In Indianapolis, a camera looking out over the city shows the sun disappearing and lights coming on. Mm. Now, the, the number one thing searched after the solar eclipse was my eyes hurt. They told you do not look into that sun. They told you don't try to take pictures. And a lot of people did. And because of that, a lot of people's eyes were hurting. They saying it could cause permanent eye damage. I thought mm. about looking at the sun yesterday, too. And I'll tell you why. Because I figured, like, I was like, man, you know how people always be saying, like, whenever it's an eclipse, you're supposed to get superpowers. Yeah. What if the only way to get superpowers is to look at the sun? And they tell us not to look at it because they don't want us to get superpowers. How would they know? Because they already got them. <laughs> they already got them and they know how to get them and how not to get them. So they tell you, don't look at the sun. Don't look at the sun. Don't look at the sun. Jeez. Did you look? A little bit. <laughs> he looked a little bit. I did. I gave it a little Real peak. Real dumb. It already <laughs> behaved blind. <laughs> you looking all guy. crazy. I gave it a little peek. That's crazy. I gave okay. it a little peek. Okay, no, for real. It is uh, a million three hundred thousand planets that can fit in the um, sun. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's the fact. It's the a fact. A fact of what? Oh, my gosh. The sun is 864,400 miles. Um, Jess, everybody knows that the sun no, is the largest massive object that. in the solar system. Okay, yeah, massive object makes it massive. But <laughs> we learned still, that in elementary school. Y'all didn't know. Yeah, yes, but did. y'all didn't know those numbers. I didn't know. Good. Thank you, Jess. Thank you. Thank you, like, Jess. I didn't know. Boy, what? What are you know. talking about? <laughs> I didn't know. This dummy just tried to peek at the sun looking down. Boy. Well, I got superpowers. <laughs> no, <you don't>. Now, <laughs> I teleported to work this morning. That's why I got here right at 6 o'clock. Whatever. You looked up, I was just sitting in the seat. You ain't even noticed. I ain't walked through the door. <laughs> You'll get out of here. Red, did I walk through the door? No. Y'all ain't even see. All right. Now, Walmart may owe you $500, and this is the reason why. This settlement means that Walmart shoppers could be eligible to receive hundreds of dollars in cash. The retail giant is paying out a total of $45 million to settle this class action lawsuit, accusing it of overcharging customers for some groceries. Walmart denies any wrongdoing, but it says that these payouts are in the best interest of customers. So if you bought weighted products like meat, poultry, pork, or seafood, or if you bought bagged citrus fruit between October 2018 and January 2024, you can now file a a claim to get your money back. Here's how you want to do that. You go to walmartweightedgrocerysettlement.com. You can file online or through the mail. If you've kept your receipts, you can qualify for up to $500 back. If not, you can get up to $25 and the deadline to apply is June 5th. If understandably you have not kept your receipts for the past five years, you can try to retrieve them on Walmart's website. I'm on there right now. Oh boy. I'm on WalmartWeightedGrocerySettlement.com. That's right, and you can get five, up to $500. So if you want some of that money, make sure you go to that website and try to get your money ASAP. That's a great little stimmy right there. Mm -hmm. $500, 500 quick dollars from Walmart? That's right. And they probably mm -hmm. owe it to you, and you probably don't even know. No. So why not go to WalmartWeightedGrocerySettlement.com and, um, you know, see if they owe you some bread? Yep, and lastly, last night, UConn beat Purdue 75 to 60 uh, that was their second win uh, they beat uh, in the 2024 National Championship. So salute to UConn, I the tried. Connecticut Huskies. I tried, guys. It's so boring. It was, right? Oh, my God. Men's college basketball is what women's college basketball used to be. It was bad. I was, the first half was like 30 to 36. I'm like, what the hell? It wasn't good at all. This supposed to be the future of the NBA? No, it wasn't. It wasn't I'm good. not interested. I, I tried. I tried. I tried. I tried. I tried. It was boring. I turned it off. All right. And that is front page news. Now, next hour, we got to tell you about Donald Trump. Um, you know, Donald Trump was against abortion, then he was kind of for abortion. Now he's kind of in the middle. We'll tell you about that. Also, Joe Biden, he's giving you more student loan relief. We'll tell you about that next hour as well. Everybody else, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again, 800-585-1051. Hit us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, we are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, quickly, last night, uh, UConn beat Purdue 75-60. Did you guys watch it? 
I tried, man, but it was so boring. That first half of basketball was so boring. It was bad. What was the score after the first half? Like 36 30 or something? 36 30, yeah. And I was just like, what are we watching? And then I don't even like the fact that they do the one whole half. And it's always been like that in men's college basketball. Right. I like quarters, man. Yeah, I like quarters, too. I just, I'm, you know, women's college basketball is just way more exciting. I don't care how much, how many times y'all dunk in the game for the men. Yeah, I didn't care. (laughs) Women's was, was way Way more more exciting. Way more interesting. Way more exciting. More star power, better mm -hmm. storylines, everything. Now we got to talk about this Idaho team that was arrested. He was uh, plotting an attack on a church. He had flamethrowers, guns, all types of stuff. Man was arrested over the weekend for allegedly trying to provide support to ISIS and for planning to attack several churches. U.S. Attorney's Office says 18-year-old Alexander Mercurio of Coeur d'Alene was arrested on Saturday for trying to provide material support and resources to the terrorist group. Court documents claim Mercurio pledged his allegiance to ISIS and intended to commit attacks on its behalf. Documents say he planned to attack people at churches in Coeur d'Alene on Sunday. He allegedly planned to use guns, knives, and fire. If he is convicted, he could face up to 20 years in prison. What the hell you get a flamethrower? Amazon? I don't know where he you got that from. You can. You can get anything off there. Damn. I don't know where he got that from. Well, Machine sell flamethrowers? I don't, I don't be searching that kind of stuff on there, so I don't know. <laughs> Sheen, so. <laughs> why do people get so? Why do women get so mad when you bring up Sheen? Sheen is dope. Because like you act like we just go ahead and just get anything. <laughs> no. We came off the elevator the other day, and the two young ladies at the front desk, two young lovely, lo- lovely young ladies that work at the front desk, uh-huh. they was on their phones. I was like, "What y'all? Lo- what y'all website y'all on?" Sheen? No. Because <laughs> no. she wasn't. <laughs> she wasn't. She was on Fashion Nova. Another girl. So. What's, is, is Fashion Nova higher end than Sheen, or is Sheen higher end than Fashion Nova? Fashion Nova uh, actually is getting a little cheap. Like they, like every everybody gets their vendors from the same person. Mm-hmm. I, I swear. I mean, their vendor is the same. Pretty little thing. Mm-hmm. Sheen, because mm-hmm. Sheen actually used to be cheaper. Now they are getting a little bit of quality stuff. Okay. And um and Fashion Nova, they all got the same vendor. You know, want to come up? Mm-hmm. Timu. They just want to come. Yes. T e m u. So if there's a dude out there trying to get something for his girl, mm-hmm. he should go to Timu. Timu, Shane, Fashion Nova, and Pretty Little Thing. Okay. They all got the same. all got the same vendor. Okay. If you wash the stuff and you dry it, it's gonna look like something else. <laughs> some, something was made. It's gonna turn into something else. It's gonna turn to something else. Yes. All right. Silk turned to cotton. <laughs> <laughs> now we got to talk Donald Trump. Now Donald Trump yesterday said, uh, as far as abortion is concerned, uh, it's whatever the state decides to do. Uh, he didn't say he's pro. He didn't say he's against. He said whatever the state decides to do mm. is what he's with. But That's not what he said several years ago. Donald Trump staked out his first public position on abortion in April of 1989, when he co-sponsored a dinner at the Plaza Hotel in Manhattan for the president of a national group that advocates for abortion rights. In 1999 on NBC's Meet the Press, Trump defended his position, doubling down on it. I'm very pro-choice. I hate the concept of abortion. I hate it. I hate everything it stands for. I cringe when I listen to people debating the subject. But you still, I just believe in choice. But you would not ban it? No. As the years passed and Trump grew more serious about running for president, his position on abortion flipped. This was him at CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, in 2011. I'm pro-life. By then, Trump was opposed to abortion rights. In a CNN interview in June 2015, even Trump himself seemed momentarily confused about where he stood on the issue. I know you're opposed to abortion. Right. I'm Uh, pro-choice. You're uh, you're pro-choice or pro-life? I'm I'm pro-life. I'm sorry. Pro-life. Uh, people's stands on things can change, so that don't mean anything. You, you you can do that to anybody who's been in you know politics or talking politics for a long time. You can it, it's you can change your stances on things. But is he yeah. pro life or is he pro choice or is he to say what do the states decide? Well, as of right now, let's be clear. Uh, this is politics over principles. Okay. You know what what Trump and Republicans have done in regards to abortion rights. All those conservative judges he appointed to the Supreme Court. It's cost them votes and cost them elections. So now Trump is trying to tell these people what they want to hear because he feels it's politically beneficial to do so. Yeah. Mm. So he's trying to get voters. Absolutely. All right. Like, this is all political theater. Like, I, and I, I've been saying for months, if I was Democrats, I would just run over and over and over ads of Trump, you know, repeatedly taking credit for, uh, you know, making the overturning of Roe v. Wade happen. The, you know, cause the, the reason you don't have abortion rights is simply because of, of, of Donald Trump and the Supreme Court, you know, justices that he appointed. I would never lay off that message you know, regardless of what political pivot Trump is currently doing, if I was Democrat. Mm-hmm. And lastly, President Joe Biden announced new moves he's making to reduce or eliminate student debt. The ability 
for working and middle class folks to repay their student loans has become so burdensome that a lot can't repay it for even decades after being in school. My administration will propose a new rule to cancel up to $20,000 in runaway interest for any borrower that owes more now, owes more now than when they started paying the loan. We plan to cancel debt for borrowers who the Department of Education determines were cheated by universities that left students on unaffordable loans and delivered little in benefits to students. Fantastic. Yeah, and, I think that's great. And they need to continue to uh, show those success, success stories, you know, through the actual people who are getting the relief. I don't want to hear that from Joe Biden's. He's, he's uninspiring. Yeah, I want it, I want to hear that from the people who have actually gotten the relief. Now, it's very difficult because when you graduate school, you know, your, your first five to 10 years or even 15, 20 years is paying back them school loans. So mm-hmm. you can't buy your first house. There's a lot of things you can't do. You can't invest because you can't do none of that because all you're doing is is paying those loans back. And then you see the millions and billions of dollars that they give to all these other nations and the millions and billions of dollars that they're giving to things that a lot of people don't care about, but a lot of people can't even start their life because they have all these loans. So you got to show that you are also pouring money into the people right here in this country. And you're doing it through student loan debt relief. So you got to show more of that. That's right. But show it through the people who are actually getting the relief. Like you should have ads with those people Talking about how much got wiped out. You're right. Like, I know one person who got a, I know a person who got $300,000 wiped out. Really? And the reason they had $300,000 wiped so out much? because he had student loan debt, his wife had student wow. loan debt, and one of his kids did. And that's something you can combine it all can together. You? Yeah, something they did that they combined it all together. But the whole family got their student loan debt wiped out. And it was like $300,000. Wow, yes. that's then that changes. But that's a life, person sure. who, yes, yes, you should hear that from that yes, individual. Absolutely, you know, if you saw that person on a commercial telling that story, that resonates with you more than Joe Biden's that's, inspiring self. That just made me feel good. Well, all right. Mm-hmm. Well, that is front page news. All right, now let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Let's talk Young Miami and JT. Now, just with the mess, she reported that Young Miami and JT got into an altercation online yesterday. They're friends now. They made up. Good morning, Young Miami. She listens every morning. Mm-hmm. So we're asking, 800-585-1051, could you be friends with somebody after you get into a public, I guess, confrontation? Kerfuffle? Yeah. Kerfuffle. It depends what's said. <laughs> yeah. It depends what they yeah, say. I, be, I believe it. Let's, let's discuss. 800-585-1051, because I always feel like you have the opportunity to call me. Mm-hmm. You ain't have to go online. That's right. mm-hmm. You ain't have to try to go that route. So you were yeah. trying to embarrass me. You were trying to do something that you didn't have to do. Yeah. And, and it sucks if you just find out online that no, yeah, y'all probably. ain't cool. I ain't know we had an issue like that. Oh, okay. Or if you did know that there was some type of tension, because, like, of course, it's it's been obvious that it's been some type of tension between them, but who... Had let it was who took it to the internet first, mm-hmm. and and because I don't think that that in this situation, G, JT thought that Young Miami thought those songs were about her. Right. So when you find out certain details, like oh you thought that, damn. Well, why you didn't speak to me about it? Because that's what she said in one of the uh, in her tweets. Like, well, if you thought that about me, why didn't didn't why didn't you hit me up and right. say yo why these songs about me? You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. yeah. Well, let's discuss. 800-585-1051. Call us up right now. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.